I woke up in the morning at the unearthly time of 6 a.m. only to make sure that I am able to book at least two units of the much publicized Freedom 251 smartphone, one for myself and one for my father. I filled in the requisite details on the website and hit the pay now button. And then dot the page refreshed bringing me back to square one. That was the first hiccup. But no problem. Given the dirt cheap price of the phone and the advertisement blitzkrieg, it is evident that lakhs of people in India would have been making an attempt at buying the phone at the same time leading to some technical issues. What is concerning, however, is how and from where did this phone appear on the market so surreptitiously, and how will the company, ringing bells, fulfill the demand if people are able to place orders. There are other questions, too. Why is the phone not listed in the products section of Ringing Bell's website? When you land on the main website, you get to see only four products of the company. Nowhere is any mention of Freedom 251. Any product that has been marketed on such a massive level should find mention on the main website of the company itself. This is general business practice, which lends to more authenticity. The pricing is inexplicable there is no nothing in the world that can justify the R-S.251 price tag of the phone. Experts say that a phone with similar features will cost more than R-S.1,000 even if one uses the cheapest stuff. The best of economists cannot explain how something can be sold at price four times less than its cost unless there is subsidy from government. Is there any government connection? A report published by the NDETV says that the Freedom 251 has been made with immense support of the government. But there is no official confirmation of the same from any government official. Also, what constitutes immense support is unclear. So it is highly likely that the government has no hand in this. One must note that merely using the Digital India and Make in India logo for a product promotion does not mean the government is part of it. Yes, it was Merli Manohar Joshi who was spotted at the inauguration of the phone. But he is a BJP MP from camp but holds no cabinet post, which means he is not part of the government. What is ringing bells? The company is just five months and two days old. Having been incorporated on September 16, 2015, it has three directors, including founder Rohit Kima. The other two are Sushma Devi and Rajesh Kima. No one knows much about the directors. The website of Ringing Bells says that the registered office is located in Noida. The company has invited distributors to help promote the products of the brand. What is noteworthy is that it does not clearly mention the exact name of the brand. While the name of the company has been written as Ringing Bells Private Limited on all the pages of the website, the brand name is either Ring Bell or Bell on different pages, which is clearly confusing. Better illustrate this with an example. Bharti Airtel Limited is a company whose brand Airtel is India's famous telecom carrier. You do not see them using any other name for Airtel brand. What about the phone? The features are too ordinary for the day and age, but you knows that already. What is important here is that the phone appears to have lifted icon designs and look from the Apple's iPhone. Such an action would invite a lawsuit from the American giant. Remember Apple vs Samsung? Also. Chinese handset maker Xiaomi too faced a patent problem from Apple. Copyright infringement is not handled lightly by anyone in the world. So, is this a fraud? It is too early to say anything on that yet. Yes, the look and functioning of the site does not match the level of hype generated over the phone. The poor English grammar in which the company is responding to queries on its Facebook page hints that a tyro is handling it. Then there is this Adcom Connect. Based out of New Delhi, Adcom is an importer of IT products. The company, according to Hindustan Times, 
is clueless that its product was sent to the Height Office as Freedom 251 phone. Redditors have pointed out that if this turns out to be a fraud, the company is set to make 12.5 billion rupees if they are able to sell 5 crore units of the phone. As far as delivery is concerned, you pay first and then wait for 4 months. Again, many see this with suspicion. That the company presented two different phones in their advertisements of Freedom 251 strengthens suspicions, and the internet has found something new to make fun of. Perhaps the only good thing this phone has done is make thousands wake up at 6.00 am. A smartphone at Rs 251 was a jaw-dropping headline. Touted as the world's cheapest smartphone, the price point naturally raised eyebrows, and hopes. Excitement was mixed with skepticism, through the day, there were more people asking questions than answering them. As our article won't live before the launch, we are back with an update to tell you about the questions buzzing around and some possible answers. The topic has been trending on social media all day and has also sounded the alarm to a potential scam. Here are a few facts that have emerged in the past few hours. 1. A blatant rip-off of Apple, the icons, the home screen. The entire UI appears to be a rip-off of Apple's iPhone. When asked about this, ringing bells technical head Vikas Sharma admitted they had used Apple's icons saying, we have used Apple's icons because Apple hasn't copyrighted their designs. It would appear that nobody at ringing bells read the news. The folks over at Apple probably do. 2. Website, there are no contact details given on the website. There's a contact form instead. The site has most of the details hard-coded which can, at best, be called amateurish. A simple Hoyes query reveals that the domain was registered on the 10th of February 2016 and was updated on the 14th of February 2016, less than 10 days back. 3. Reselling without permission. The product came with Adcom branding, which was hidden by a whitener and overwritten with Freedom 251. And Adcom is denying that fact that it is selling or even manufacturing the phone for ringing bells. 4. Delivery date, the delivery date was a good 4 months away, as mentioned on a website with no contact details. Another red flag seems to be the fact that ringing bells could have partnered with an online sales partner like Flipkart, Snapdeal or Amazon for pre-ordering the phone. All these sites have better scale for handling huge traffic that accompany pre-ordering. Another option was to put it up on crowdfunding sites like Indiegogo, Co or Wishbury to raise money to develop the product. They chose to go with their own not so shiny new website. 5. No personal money at stake, when asked at the press conference held to announce the release of Freedom 251. If the promoters of Ringing Bells had personally invested in the company, they stated that the entire capital comprised equity and debt investment. The promoters, it seems, have very little to lose in financial terms. 6. Cost, current technology does not allow for a mobile phone to be manufactured at this cost. The bare minimum is around 3,800 Indian rupees, even if it is subsidized. The company has made it clear that they have not received any subsidy, either from the government or any other third party for this project. The magic formula remains a secret. 7. 650 plus service centers, though the site claims to have over 650 service centers, there is no mention of even a single service center, and nobody knows which cities they exist in, let alone their actual addresses. 8. More promises in the making, while cyberspace is already aware that bookings close this morning and social media has been a buzz about people's inability to book the phone on the ringing bells website, cyber cafe owners are apparently taking money from people and giving them a receipt for booking the phone on their behalf, 
as suggested by Twitter user Yaten Chawla in this tweet.